I want to thank you. I want to thank the Urban League. I want to thank our young people. I just want to thank the advocates because you are the reason why we are here today. You are the reason why we are marching. You are the reason why we are passing police reform from every single level of government, from Congress to the State House to the City of Philadelphia. You are the reason why that statue is down. So I thank you. I thank you for using your bodies. I thank you for using your minds to change the vision, to change the structure of this nation. It is because of you, it is because of a movement led by young people that we are able to accomplish what we are able to accomplish. I recognize that it is Father's Day, so happy Father's Day to all of the fathers in the audience. Thank you to all of our black men that are being fathers as coaches, as mentors, as leaders. And I want to say happy Father's Day to George Floyd, who this is going to be the very first Father's Day that he is not able to celebrate with his family. And I did have to ask the question, well, as an African-American woman, why am I speaking at a father's rally? You know, sometimes we got to, you know, let our men, you know, lead some things. But then I realized as an African-American woman, every time that we see a black man, a black body being stolen from us in this country, we are hurting. We are hurting because now we have to raise a family without that leader. We are hurting because now we have to look to a community who no longer has that leader. So we are hurting. We cry. That mother, his wife will now have to raise their children without their father. And again, this is not a new story for us. The media, the mainstream media would like to tell you, this is how you spend Father's Day. At a cookout, throwing the ball in a park, or simply having a dinner, exchanging welcome, thank you cards, putting up hashtags, putting up social media posts. But as the African American community, we celebrate Father's Day a little bit different. We celebrate recognizing, again, the men that we lose every single year. And in the city of Philadelphia, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, we don't have to go far to look to George Floyd because it's happening right here. If you think of David Jones just several years ago, losing his life to not just the knee on the neck, but the gun, the bullet in the back, the chokehold. There are so many stories that we can tell in this Commonwealth and in this city. So again, we don't have to go far to tell this story. We don't have to go far in our history. When we talk about Martin Luther King, when we talk about Malcolm X, when we see so many people to like to use their quotes but not live the 364 days, the rest of the days of the year trying to move the needle about what they're talking about, we don't have to go that far in our history. And last but not least, that is how Cato, Octavius Cato lost his life. On election day, fighting for the progress of black and brown communities. So every time, Every time somebody stands at this statue, make sure in your lineup, yes. you explain who Octavius Cato is. So we don't forget their memory. We don't forget why we're marching. We don't forget why we're standing here. Last but not least, and I'll close on this. Right now, we're standing up for police reform. But we also recognize the knee on our neck when it comes to economic progress for the Woo! black community. Yeah. We recognize the knee on our neck when it comes to our education system. When our black boys, our black girls are suspended at a higher rate, are criminalized just for learning, just for building their character, just for being them. We recognize there's injustices across this entire system. We don't even have to talk about the criminal justice system because we've been having that conversation for some time. So again, I want to thank you for using your bodies to build and change a movement. And we got a long way to go. And we've, we've been marching for about two or three weeks. But remember, the bus boycott lasted for 382 days. The Greensboro sit-in lasted for months. The civil rights movement is lasting for decades. So I say make sure you get your good Nikes, tie them up, because we got a long way to go. Thank you.